We back with the boxing planning, speaking on, you know, our top five most anticipated boxing fights heading to 2018. And next week, we'll get into, you know, tossing off some awards. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to the Boxing Clinic and More Facebook page. So next week, when I do the fan uh, question uh, um, polls, you know, you can be on the lookout for that. Every day next week, it should be a new uh, fighter of the year, trainer of the year, poll up, and we'll take the fans' uh, vote, and then uh, we have our own vote on here. And um, next week, we'll you know, disperse the awards for the fans and the boxing clinic personal uh, you know, votes and all that, or winners. But we back, and um, you know, it's our top five, you know, uh, no Pacific order, um, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, Anthony Joshua and Deontay Wilder is amongst one of the top two or three most anticipated fights in the sports world, in the sports world, especially in boxing, combat, you know, MMA, UFC, whatever you want to call it. I think that's one of the top fights that everybody wants to see now, starting to get some traction. And uh, if Anthony Joshua can ever uh, make some noise in America before that fight can happen, that fight can be huge around the world, you know what I'm saying? Um I think that's one of the you know most anticipated fights amongst the hardcore fans, and I'm starting to think I'm starting to think it's starting to trickle down to the casual public and people starting to know who Deontay Wilder is and learn who Anthony Joshua is on the U.S. domestic level, and I think it's a beautiful thing if they fought they fought in 2018. Now, now me saying this is the most anticipated fight for 2018 doesn't mean these fights are going to happen. It's just that it's fights that you know it's the top bill fights that you know a lot of fans want to see casual hardcore. Um, you know, mouth watering type of fights. Um, another one is um, you know, Earl Spence versus Keith Thurman that might be number one right now. Um, a lot of people on the casual level and the hardcore level and anywhere in between, um, want to see that fight. You know, um, it's a fight that you know since Spence was fifteen and zero that he wanted, um, and Keith still didn't want to do it. And uh, he made you know Spence and he still making Spence earn his way the hard way. And come up and not giving him an easy route to him. Um, Keith Thurman has fought once for the last two years, and he fought once in 2016, once this year in 2017. And uh, one of my subscribers got mad because I said if he didn't fight by June, he should be stripped. And I stand by that. You know, he said he was leaving the page, he was unsubscribing. Bye. You know, um, I'm not gonna miss words with nobody. You feel me? Uh, I feel that if he was due to inactivity um, and only fighting and defending his belt once in 2017 and 16. And I feel that if he didn't have a fight by June, it was going to be once in 2018. That man, let them belts go and, and let Terrence Crawford and Earl Spence uh, figure it out, and whoever else wants to figure it out and try to become undisputed. And Keith, you can get you could jump back in on the back the back end, which is not the case anyway because Keith is fighting in April versus Jesse Vargas, which is a you know more than a tune-up fight in my opinion. Dig, um, I think that was a big big move by Keith Thurman by making that move. Um, I think that's another good fight in uh, 2018 that's already made. But, um, yeah, I think, you know, that's the number one fight people want to see. People talking pay-per-view. Keith Thurman is against pay-per-view. If you heard him speak on that, he's more of a guy that wants to fight on CBS, free CBS. He want to be free and access and be accessible to all fans and build it that way. And I think, you know, that's the perfect way for boxing to go, to keep up with the NFL, you know, NBA, MLB. You know, have your best product accessible and free on regular TV, in my opinion. Um, you know, but that's that's a top bill fight. You know, that probably could be number one. At the, end of the, at, the end of the, at the end of the list, I'll try to round them off to the best I could and, and give you exact top five in order. I guess I'll do that. Um, another one is Vasily Lomachenko versus Mikey Garcia. Now a lot of people want to see that fight. Um, that's another that's another great fight right there. Um, I see a lot of people on the Ring IQ boxing group and Facebook. Shout out to them and Julius Fox. Um, they're saying it's a 50-50 fight, and I, I agree it's a good fight. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of people want to see Lomachenko move up and fight bigger guys. Because that's what a lot of the all-time greats did, you know, do and still they still do and they and they did in the past. So um, we want, that's how you gonna measure how great he is. How he moves up and fight bigger a bigger opponent and not smaller opponents, equal size opponents. How he move up and be bigger guys. Even though Mikey Garcia, um, you know, started off with when Lomachenko started off at, you know, now when he jumped up to forty, he was willing to jump up to fifty-four and forty-seven. Most people feel that he's bigger, uh, physically bigger than Lomachenko, which I'm not hundred percent sure. That that's the case, you know. Um, but it's another anticipated fight. I know it's a big fight. Um, another one, a lot of people sleeping on, in my opinion. Uh, and these are fights that uh, that's not already made or close to being made. So Triple G and Golovkin, um, it's just basically already made. It's just 
Um, you know, it just ain't a formality yet, but it's it's almost finalized. But um, another one, I think David Benavidez versus uh, Gilberto Ramirez at 168 with James McGill out the picture. I mean, you know, that's the top rank uh, Al Heyman PBC crossover fight. Um, that's a great fight. They sparred, and David Benavidez said, I could sell the sparring tape to people who were so good. And um, I think it's a good fight. I know Benavidez is only 20, but he's been pro since 16, turned pro in Mexico. Um, you know, he's a good fighter. I thought he lost to Gar- Ronald Garville because of the knockdown, but it is what it is. He said he had injured his hand or something like that. Ramirez got him off a big fight and a big win on ESPN versus Jesse Hart. I think that's another great fight. And, uh, of course, Terrence Crawford versus Earl Spence. That's another big fight. It's a fight a lot of people want to see. A lot of people, you know, kind of gravitated to that fight because Keith Thurman was out and they needed the next best thing in the welterweight division even before Crawford became a welterweight. People were talking about that fight. I think that's another big, big clash of, uh, you know, styles. And I think that might creep up to head of Keith Thurman, Earl Spence, in my opinion. And um, let me number them off real quick. Um, I'm going to still say with Keith coming back now in the near future, Keith and Earl is number one. Joshua and Wilder is number two. Um, Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford is number three. If Earl can get past Keith, or Keith, Keith slash Earl versus Crawford is number three. Let me say it better that way. Uh, number four is Mikey versus Lomachenko. Number five is Gilberto Ramirez versus Dan, uh, David Benavidez. Let me know some of the fights y'all want to see. We gone.